just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run, afraid of love I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. everybody <laughs> welcome to beyond the body and uh, I just love that intro thank you so much Frank for that music I it just makes me smile every time I hear it okay well we've had uh, quite a an interesting week since the last program or a couple of weeks <clears throat> and uh, this is probably one of the more spontaneous programs <laughs> I've ever done um, Lila and I had been joining all week um, over sickness as a decision, lesson 136 in the Course in Miracles, sickness as a decision. And uh, so whenever I set anything up, that's what I get an opportunity to experience. So the past couple of weeks have really been unraveling this whole concept of sickness as a decision. And um, Jenny, my guest today, my hand holder, uh, she has been present to many of my unravelings. It started in Tabula Rasa when I first met you. I think that was the first time we had met in person. Hmm. And uh, she was present. She was the first person um, actually prior to or since that uh, I was joining with her about something that was coming up. And uh, she said, can I touch your tumor? And at the time, no one but hospice people had touched it. And uh, it was kind of like, well, okay. And she put her hand on my belly. I won't forget it. I can still see us. Mm. We're there right now. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And she said, it feels like a baby. Mm. And I had... I just burst into tears. It was, I didn't realize the amount of shame that I was holding on to. And you saw me as innocent. You were the first, that was the, the biggest experience is this woman is holding me as innocent. She's a mighty companion. And she's been with David for 12 years and um, has done her own work, I'm clear. And uh, so now she can be in the presence of people exploring their shame and not dive into it with them, just holding the innocence. So welcome, Jenny. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Welcome Kalika. to our, our little audience here. <laughs> Beyond the body. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you. she also, just to, to give you a little more of who Jenny is, she has compiled a book for, for David and Living Miracles um, that will be coming out in February of 2019. This moment is your miracle. And uh, I had this experience this week. She came to La Casa and was staying there. And uh, again, more, I, I like to say, it's like eggs hitting the pavement <laughs> for me of just areas of darkness that I didn't realize I was holding on to came up when um, Jenny came and we were exploring some topics. And so she's been sharing a lot about this moment is your miracle and reading the healing section from it, which I just have to say is completely profound and so accurate. There's so many misunderstandings of healing. And I think the clarity in this book is profound. Yeah. 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 One of the main major things in this book and that is like a response to the major error in the world around healing is that healing is of the mind. Healing is always mental and, and it's distorted in the world because it's always the focus on the form, fixing the form, fixing the form, which is actually perpetuating the error. It perpetuates the belief that you are the body, that the world is your home and you know, all of that. It's, it's the wrong focus basically. So healing is to redirect the focus. Right. Yeah. 
And that's, I mean, I, I, you know, I'll just pull this back because again, this started with like Greg Donner's in the audience, Jenny's, <laughs> Jenny's beloved, um, all our beloveds. <laughs> He's my husband too. Um, <laughs> and he was at the very first month that I was at the monastery. And uh, it was, again, it was a huge awakening for me. Um, and a piece of that was, and I remember it was the only time I think I really even talked to David um, and he called and he was on a, a, a phone and there was a Michael was there and he was saying well you know if there's anything you need to do in form you might want to explore that and for me the good news and I really am starting to see this more and more as such a gift um, I mean I was put in hospice they gave up on me the doctor said nothing we can do we went in we did as much as we could you're on your own and when you feel bad enough enter hospice and I told David I said that's the good news I don't have to explore that avenue of form any longer because there was nothing to explore they said mm -hmm. you know yeah it's everywhere mm -hmm. we can we can track it and tell you where it's going to which didn't seem like a good idea but and this is this is the mind it has to be the mind and so I knew at that point there was nowhere else to go. You know what? I may have a surprise for you, but I think that's actually the first time I met you it was in 2012 in New Mexico in a course group. <gasps> you were in that course when David came through? When Greg and I came through. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was oh always God. surprised to hear that you were in hospice in 2012 because that was the year. It was through. right after that that I went into hospice. Mm. It was not too long. Mm. Oh my God, I remember that. <laughs> oh, that's. <Yeah. laughs> oh so that's our first encounter, really. But then oh, I several years. You went. sat over here on a couch. I was here. Yeah. I remember the light was coming in and hitting you both in your face. <laughs> I can see it like it was right there. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> It's a, it's, I'm in a cascading miracle. That's all I can say. It's like this moment is your miracle and it cascades if you allow it. Um, yeah, and I just want to share what happened this week because Lila, and I don't know if she's on the program yet, but Lila, Lila and I were planning on going on this program together. And yesterday, um, there were so many things happening. The healing was massive this past week. And it came up when we were looking at really reaching out to the non-dual community as far as exploring who out there is, is waking up and needs some support, needs some mighty companions to mm. join with. And um, at that moment, I had a, a loop come through, and it was a man in that group that you guys came to. <laughs> there was a man in that group, um, and there's a lot of non-dual people in Santa Fe. They're core students and they're non-dual. And he really believed um, in the Pleiades. And it's not the UFO thing that I had a problem with, but he was waiting for them to save us, as many are. And I was just coming into this, I, you know, I'm kind of screwed if I can't look at my mind. And so I was really pushing the issue of, you know, I, I have to go into this cancer thing and not wait for someone else to save me because clearly no one's going to be there. And so we were talking about in an expression session this week and his face came up and I just shared saying, you know, I got real aggressive with him at one point. He also was a Vietnam vet dealing with quote unquote Agent Orange exposure that created cancer. So he had cancer and I got really pissy with him. Mm. I don't know if I can say that on the air. <laughs> I was really angry. <laughs> <laughs> and it was me being angry at myself of not knowing how to do this, how to go deeper with this. And the frustration level I projected out onto him. So, Peter, if you're watching this, I, I love you, man. <laughs> and what came from there? So that was, that was just the beginning. That was just the scraping of the, the eggshell a little bit. What really threw it down was... I asked Jenny, she was staying at La Casa, and I asked to join with her, and she couldn't do it immediately. And so she came in at the end of the day and said, let's join. And there was nothing up, and I've known not to dig for it. It's not something you go digging for. And so we, we had a pleasant conversation, and then as she was getting up to leave, 
we went to hug each other and she all she said was oh I see you as this sweet little five-year-old that's all she said and we hugged and I all I said was oh my god what the hell did you just say <laughs> or something to that fact because it was clearly there were things rising very quickly and we didn't talk about it then in fact we're just now really kind of joining on this um, it took me on this journey into my life and it was um, at five years old I remember the decision to be sick and I just need to say sickness is I made decisions for disaster I made decisions for foreclosure I made decisions for angry projections failed relationships I mean I made a lot of decisions none of them were happy none of them led to any kind of love but those were decisions so in the course when it says I made a decision to be sick you fill in your version of sickness because they all look different but the last card I pulled was cancer and um, when I was five my father was a raging alcoholic my mother was a sick codependent anorexic and I <laughs> got early on oh man if I'm looking for love it's not going to be in either one of those venues and so mm -hmm. my brother was the one that I made the idol for my love he was my savior and protector and you know he was my mighty companion throughout until Vietnam and and I remember distinctly we were all watching TV one day the lottery was in place in the States and they were pulling birthdays and positions of whether or not you were going to Nam and uh, we were all sitting around watching and they pulled my brother's birthday and they pulled number one and he was going to Vietnam hmm. and I fell apart but my mom went into the kitchen my brother went into his room and my father turned the channel and that was the beginning and I was getting angry at Nam so I was out protesting the war while my brother went over and fought the war and it was a huge split mm. in our ability to love each other mm. and that just continued to grow throughout life there were lots of other circumstances but that was the beginning and it was this decision as this innocent five-year-old to have a brother that I love that I could reflect my love on until it couldn't be That's reflected beautiful. anymore yeah and well, so this is it yeah right and what is beautiful I can see too that probably at that point you've made a decision too to transcend the belief in personal love and that you would be loved beyond that although at that time it was too hard to see that That's interesting the healing journey you know is all about transcending that person yeah, this is new <laughs> this is the, I'll have to sit with this. yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there was, it definitely was mm -hmm. that feeling of there's a bigger love. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. Which is what we're all looking for. And that's what the, the whole nature of this program is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when, when you invited me and I was thinking of, of this and, and the, the theme of sickness and going beyond the body and what came to me is, you know, the simple way that I see to heal is to actually just say, how do I feel now? Or what am I thinking now? Mm -hmm. Go in every moment and see what, what is the decision? Do I decide for sickness or for healing in this moment? You know, then we are, then we are rid of all the, you know, intricacies and, okay, when did I meet somebody who had the flu or what? What did I do to get this cancer? Was it on the timeline? You know, no, it's actually, how do, what do I think right now, you know? And then we don't look to the form. The, the spirit and the answer doesn't look to the form of things, you know? The form is only on the timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. And that's, I had a Facebook Live this week and I talked about pain because one of my awarenesses is, if I'm in this moment right now, Pain is impossible. Mm. Yeah. It's only projected in, from the past to the future and that fear, that, that back and forth. Oh my God, it's been painful, it's gonna be painful. 
but if you can focus on this moment, and for me, it's listening to the birds. I mean, mm -hmm. I can go into immediate moment by, oh, can you hear the birds? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, stay there. I can hear them right now. Yeah. And it brings it very present. And you're right. Form is on the timeline. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this moment is your miracle. I, and we were talking this morning. I'm hoping there may be a program um, that comes on where Jenny or somebody reads sections of this book. We're still all, we're, that just came up this yeah. morning. But um, it is the way that you have put it into words there's so much clarity with it. Mm. I don't know if you have anything prepared. I know I'm going to put you on the spot <laughs> here. Um, do you have anything from the wow. healing section that you read? Because it was so profound. And I think it might be helpful for others. There was some that came to my mind. Okay, great. Um, well, I can read a couple of shorter pieces. Or maybe... Yeah, I have two or three. We have the metaphysics behind sickness, mm -hmm. which we, we touched on, but it's uh, like this. Because we believe we are pulled away from, uh, from God and separated from our home in heaven, we believe that there could be some punishment or retribution, some price to pay. This fear of retribution from God is unconscious because of this and being aware of the truth that I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. The mind is actually afraid of healing. And this is why it makes itself sick. It's saying this body is real. It is my identity. It strengthens our belief in the body's identity rather than the and mind. And I'm not innocent. Right. And I'm not innocent. That's the core. So I need to be punished. Yeah. It's and sick. Yeah. It really is. I mean, it's such a yeah. dysfunctional way of looking at everything. Yeah. yeah. And then it's the evidence when the body gets sick. It's like, okay, God. Poof. Yeah. I'm bad. Yeah. And I am separate from God. And God, God's reality is not real. This sick reality is real because the body is the proof. Yeah. You know? That's where it goes. And then the problem, why? Because many people say, why don't I get healed? Why it doesn't oh, healing come? I prayed a, for years, and, you know. It's a hornet's nest. Yeah. <laughs> but I got the answer here. We put it oh, in the book. Please share. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll read it. Let's take a look at a scenario which could have a transcending nature for you if you yearn for healing. So a patient typically goes to a doctor or a therapist because he wants a magical shift. He wants a better life in form. He wants the doctor to magically take away his problem, his difficulties, his pain, and his symptoms. And herein lies the problem. Getting a better life in form is just a temporary shift. It can never be lasting. And the true healer, the Holy Spirit, is the real therapist and the doctor. However, the patient thinks twice about going to this doctor, <laughs> to, to the Holy Spirit's healing, because the Holy Spirit requires a complete shift. Yes. It means that he would have, the patient would have his self-concept completely dismantled in his entire world. And he might think, I didn't ask you to take my life away. I asked you to make it better. <laughs> Give me a better life. Give me a better illusion instead of the dismantling. Oh my God. Because of the fear of loss of his life as he knows it, the patient would not trust the Holy Spirit. So the sickness and the temporary fixes churn on and on. I hope you got this. <laughs> I hope you got this. This is profound because this is, and I must say, I went through terror. I mean, I was in hospice. How much more terror can you go through? I tell you, the decision to give up my life, hmm. that was terrifying. It, it, there was some ease in hospice, you know? They would take care of everything for you. They were just going to transition you out. Bye-bye. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> and then I made a decision. Okay, I'm going to change everything. I am going to literally give up what I think brings me pleasure. And coming into community, and I had to face some really horrible, I mean, what I was holding is this, I can't do this. 
you know, I gave up my dogs. Mm -hmm. They were my life. Mm -hmm. But the reality was I had to be willing to turn it all over. Mm -hmm. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what she's saying here. And this, this goes with anyone that wants to make any change in their life, whether they want a happier relationship or more money or, I mean, fill in the blank of your disease, yeah. your disease. And when you share that, I just want to say how simple it is in a way, because it is the Holy Spirit's answer is in the moment. You know? <laughs> it's now we decide. Yeah. It's in the moment. It's now we heal. It's not the big, you know, timeline thing that it's going to take time and you know it's interesting I would have I would love to have had that concept I mean I really feel like I'm just coming into that now when I was shifting my life you know and getting rid of all those favorite things you know because I was pulling on the past oh my god they've made me so happy and that means I'm not going to have happiness in the future so it was I was all in the timeline in my process of giving it all over to Holy Spirit. Right. And I feel like, you know, maybe I could have, if I were holding that, it would have been a different experience of letting yeah. go. It's the tricky belief in sacrifice. It's a tricky it's, belief in sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. It's also part of the healing to face. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Sacrifice is impossible unless it's on the timeline. It keeps coming back to this mm -hmm. timeline thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because we weren't taught how to live in the moment. Right. <laughs> it was always future. Yeah. I mean, I think we even talked about this. In my family, it was we're waiting for another shoe to drop, which is always future-based. <laughs> I mean, you know, right now we're okay, but there's going to be another shoe dropping at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. So it's like I just learned how to think on that timeline like that. Mm -hmm. So I went from one disaster to another, to another, to another. And I, I must say, I, this is relatively recent that I'm really kind of coming into this. Where are you? What are you thinking right now? Where are you right now? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the key. Wow. That's the key. Because if there is any little darkness in there, doubt thoughts, a self, you know, I think it's often like self punishment and. <laughs> Self-doubt and the unworthiness. Yeah. Those kind of thoughts running. And if that's there, that is actually the choice for sickness. So in that moment to just be open to because it's not even our job to change. It's just our job to be willing to change and then right. invite the light, invite the spirit. And Holy Spirit can only be here in this moment. Yeah. Because Holy Spirit isn't on a timeline. Mm -hmm can only be experienced now. <laughs> now, yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh man. The easiest thing <laughs> in the world, right? It's, I mean, it is when we remember it. Yeah. And I just need to say, and find yourself some mighty companion somewhere um, that can hold this for you when you can't. Because that is, and I, and I offer you the 30-day program. Um, there's a Facebook group that I'm, I'm helping with moderating. And there are a bunch of mighty companions that are on this group that will hold that space. You can type in your projections of the future, fear of the past, fear of the future. And there will be mighty companions that can join you in, in bringing you back into the moment. Because it is a skill and I think you can only learn it from others that have gone before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and readiness, too, in the mind to, to, right. to take that in. And that we can cultivate our own readiness and willingness, you know, just right. by practicing this seeing in the moment what is there. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's so I beautiful to be you. with you. I love you, too. <laughs> 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 Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. You know, I just need to say that uh, Mighty Companions look very different. You, you, none of them look the same. And I was sharing this before, but I feel the need to say this right now. I have many Mighty Companions, and some of them are like Jenny that just felt like warm butter. You know, it's like you just kind of gooey and can sink right into it. And then there are other mighty companions 
that I find myself projecting something on. And they're equally as wonderful. And they're equally my gifts. And it's just for me to, to let go of projection, you know, and accept the atonement for myself and see them as my mighty companion, just like Jenny. And then they turn into warm butter, too. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, and then we all just kind of melt and ooze together, and it's a beautiful thing. Mm. <laughs> I mean, this process called A Course in Miracles is something to be experienced. And I just say, if you've been studying it for a long time, I really offer you the opportunity to jump just jump in, you know, the water's great. <laughs> and it is an experience that you've got to feel. Um, you can't study it. Mm -hmm. Studies on the timeline, you're still mm -hmm. waiting for something to happen. Yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> um, okay, we've got just a few minutes left. And I, I think, <laughs> just because, oh, man, I've been rereading the Manual for teachers, man. David has an audio that's just fabulous. I go to sleep listening to it at night. And uh, I don't know if I want to read that. Anyway, I highly recommend you read that. But I think I'm going to just end this. Do you want to say what it was? Um, the Manual for <laughs> Teachers. Well, it's a shift in perception. Right. It's the section on healing, the Manual for Teachers. Yeah, I didn't mention that. Um, <laughs> It's, it's the only one to read if you're going to be reading any of them. Um, but David has actually done audios of all of them, and I invite you to go to YouTube, David Hoffmeister, Manual for Teachers, and they'll all pop up, um, or ACIM. And you can, you can find them there. And they're, the Manual for Teachers is profound. And if you've been studying A Course in Miracles for a while, I highly recommend it's time to move into the experiential. And that's where the Manual for Teachers really takes us. And just to end this, gear up the outro, <laughs> because I just want to talk a little bit about communion, because it's all about communion, and communion is hearing the voice of God, and that's really the gift that we're all here for. And Jenny could hear the voice for God when I couldn't, and she was able to share that as a mighty companion to me when I needed it, and continues to, from what I can see. So this is from text the text, chapter 19. Communion is another kind of completion which goes beyond guilt because it goes beyond the body. And so with that, I just, mm. I thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. You're my gift from God. <laughs> and until next two weeks, folks. Hi! <laughs> Have a great moment! <laughs> <laughs> It was just a tiny mad idea At which the Son of God remained